I just want to talk to you for a little bit. Uh, I have a message that Yahweh's laid on my heart. Uh, actually, I, I was listening to Bill Cloud uh, last week or the week before last uh, with the Torah portion at Kev. And it really spoke to me. And after listening to it, I kind of got my own message. And so I just... Uh, going to go ahead and give it and and I hope it blesses you in somehow some way if you do uh, get anything out of the messages or anything if you would like and subscribe and share uh, that would be great on my YouTube channel I'm also on Facebook uh, Starlet Cooper on Facebook so uh, the name of this message uh, it's actually the name of the same message that Bill Cloud gave uh, is is called the Etza, Etzba Elohim, which means the finger of God. So, uh, going back to the Torah portion of Kev, it means that it's uh, it means because or reward. And he he mentioned in his video or his live stream that uh, the finger of God or the Etzba Elohim is mentioned twice. In a, in a particular way, uh, may, you know, it's mentioned more times than that, but the two particular times that he talked about. And the first time it's mentioned, it's talking about uh, God's own finger, which is the Atzba Elohim, and he wrote the Ten Statements with his own finger. Uh, if you saw the Ten Commandments movie, you remember seeing that he carved them out with his finger. And some people call them the commandments. Uh, it, it's really the statements, but he wrote it with his own finger. So if y'all write something with his own finger, do you think that it loses its power down through the centuries? Or is it alive and well and powerful? And is it just like it always was? Does it still stand? Well, of course, it, I'll answer that for you. Yes, it still stands. And, uh, let's see, where am I at here? And when he wrote this, it was for the good of mankind. It was for our good. All of his commandments are for our good. But most people deny the commandments of God uh, about keeping them. They go through them and tell, tell you and your, uh, you know, that they're done away with, that they're abolished. But if, if Yahweh writes something with his own finger, I think it still stands. But uh, I asked myself this question, or asking you this question, if you say that the commandments of God are done away with and we shouldn't have to keep them anymore, well, do you teach your kids not to steal or lie or murder? Uh, you know, if you if you're teaching these things to your children, then in re all reality, you are obeying God's commands. Another place it's mentioned is in Daniel chapter five, where Belshazzar is drunk and shows all of the wealth that he has, and even the wealth that are the things of God that came out of the temple that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had taken from there. He shows all these drunken kings everything that that's there and it says that they worship the gods of silver and gold and those things were not his to show off his father Nebuchadnezzar took them from the temple in Jerusalem and so I'll just read you just a little bit of this story it's Daniel 5 verse 22 starting in verse 22 and you his son O Belshazzar have not humbled your heart Though you knew all this, but have lifted yourself up against Yahweh of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God in whose hands your breath is, and whose are all your ways, you have not glorified. Revelation 9.20, it's also there. Then the part of the hand was sent from him, and this writing was written, 
and this is the writing that was written many, many Tiko Nufarzim. This is interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tiko, you are weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then, Pel then, Pel sorry. then Belshazzar commanded, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. On that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. So it didn't take long for that to come true. So this time, the finger of God, or the Etzba Elohim, wrote out his demise, and it came quickly. Under the renewed covenant, Yahweh no longer uses tablets of stone, but with his own finger writes them on the tablets of our hearts. Look what Jeremiah says in 3130. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, that I will cut a, a renewed covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, although I am husbanding them, says Yahweh. But this will be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my Torah teaching, Torah teaching, because when he says Torah, it's really Torah or the law means teachings and instructions. So, back getting up here, it says, I will put my Torah teaching in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And each person will no longer teach his neighbor and, his, and each person, his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh. For I shall forgive their iniquity, and I shall no longer remember their sin. Other places this is found is First uh, John 2.27, Isaiah 43.25, Hebrews 8.8-12, 10, 16 through 17, and 31 through 34. Thus says Yahweh, who gives the sun for light by day, the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who breaks the sea so the waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, the seed of Israel will also forever cease from being a nation before me. Now, has the nation of Israel uh, disappeared? No, it is not. And so that word is forever. The ordinances of the moon and the stars and the sun. So how can something be done away with when Yah, with his own finger, writes it on our heart? So it said in those verses that he wrote it on our hearts. With his own finger, the Etzba Elohim, he wrote it with his own finger, the finger of God. To say that makes you lawless, and Yeshua said he will tell the lawless to depart from him. He'll say, ye workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. Workers of lawlessness, it's, that means that you are lawless. So quit making the law sound like a bad word and get it straight. I call them cemetery preachers, but they're really a seminary. It's what well, it really is seminary, but I always joke around and call them cemetery preachers. Are taught this crazy stuff and it's taking people down a slippery slope. The law is simply teaching and instructions. The law, the Torah, that's what it is. It was not done away with. I mean, I could do another whole message on that. I probably have somewhere. But he didn't do away with it. He said not one jot or tittle. And he was using Hebrew language when he said that. He wasn't saying uh, a period or a dot. He was saying a jot or a tittle, which is a, a Hebrew uh, uh, vowel point or I'm not, I can't think of the word right now what it is, but I've done some Hebrew and I uh, 
can write it and pretty much read some of it, the newer one, the black one. But so it's Hebrew language he's using when he's referring to that, but not one one jot or tittle will be done away with until all the law is fulfilled. So by the Spirit of the living God, not on stones of tablet, but on tablets and fleshy hearts. So now that's found. Uh, okay, I got ahead of myself there a little bit. The law is simply teaching and instructions. So for those of you who own the New Testament people that only like to hear something out of the New Testament, and some of you haven't even read any of the Old Testament, and who reads a book uh, and begins in the middle or at the end, you always start a book from the beginning. And just a quick little testimony is most of I got saved at 19, which was many moons ago. And I uh, never was encouraged by the preachers the, the churches that I went to to ever read the Old Testament. I was always encouraged to read the New Testament. And then I had about a 10 year span about 20 years ago, that 30 years ago, uh, something like that, but it was it lasted about 10 years. and where I just studied the Bible and I started in the beginning of the Bible and the whole New Testament came alive after reading and studying them together I would do Old Testament New Testament together or Torah and Brit Hadashah together and I could see all the places that was talking about Yeshua he's all the way through the whole Old Testament and so I started asking more questions and actually nobody could answer those until I, you know, met some people that had, were, was going through the same thing and awakened the same time I was. So anyhow, so you people that only want to hear the New Testament, here's a 2 Corinthians 3.13. You yourselves are our letter, which has been written in our hearts, known and read by all mankind being revealed because you are a letter from Messiah, being cared for by us, not having been written in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on stone tablets, but on tablets and fleshy, fleshly hearts. Pretty much the same thing that Jeremiah said and, uh, when, and also when he wrote on the tablets, it was with his finger, the etzba Elohim. That is enough proof that the Etzba Elohim, the finger of God, has written his word on your hearts. It's not abolished. The scriptures say if you turn your ear from hearing God's law, that your prayers are an abomination to him. Now we could go and look up the word abomination and we could find out through scriptures, not just the definition of it in, a, in like a Webster dictionary or anything, but if we would go just use scriptures alone and do a re cross-reference of those, we would find out that uh, the word abomination means a lot of things. And uh, so he's saying if you turn your ear from hearing God's law, it's the same as uh, any other abomination say like I don't want to get banned off of YouTube but uh, gay lifestyle or swines pigs are called abomination there's there's are like uh, things sacrificed to uh, other gods that aren't real so there's a lot of places talks about abominations and so uh, it shall be an abomination if you turn your ear from hearing God's law. So I think that's what should be a wake-up call for many people that saying God's law is done away with. It's time to think this over. If you claim to be saved and are born again, then Yahweh wrote his teachings and instructions on your heart. So quit thinking that it's done away with, please. The Etzba Elohim wrote that on your heart, so quit turning away from it. 
and start uh, studying all of God's word from uh, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, I'll give you a little uh, clue that really works really good is when I started studying at that time uh, was uh, I'd do a chapter in Genesis and then a chapter in Matthew and then I just went along with it like that daily and I also did pro Psalms and Proverbs and I found out so many things that the church was telling me was done away with uh, like the feast feast of Yahweh, the Sabbath, eating clean, all that, and I'm just still daily just discovering so many things that I was told was not true and I was lied to. So I'm just hoping that somebody listening to this will understand that uh, all of God's word is important, even the begats. Uh, they're important, believe it or not. I used to get so bored reading the beget, so-and-so beget, so-and-so, and so-and-so beget, so-and-so. But it's all for a reason they're in there. Every word is important. Every time there's a number, every time there's a, a beget, any of that, it's all important. And one day will mean something to you. But anyhow, I'm not going to keep going on. I've already went 16 minutes. I just wanted to... Let you know that the Etzba Elohim, the finger of God, wrote his laws on your heart when you accepted Yeshua as your Savior, when you became born again of, of uh, the Spirit. And, you know, not all the laws are for us. There's some for men, there's some for women, there's, you know, some for priests, there's some if you live in the land. There's moral uh, commandments, you know, that's for our good that teaches us how to live in this world and and live a good life, a healthy life, if we want to go and follow it the way we're supposed to. Uh, do we break the commandments? Yeah, we don't want to, but there's times we do. And there is grace through the shed blood of Yeshua for that. But just please quit saying God's word and his law is done away with. It's not. The only thing that hung on the cross with Yeshua was the daily sacrifices, animal sacrifices, and the ordinances by the priest. The rest of God's word is still there for us. And you may not believe it, but you already know God's word, his law. It's written inside your heart, like I've been trying to tell you. So it's the Etzba Elohim. And if you like this message, please like it, share it, and please subscribe. I'm trying to get uh, where I can do live videos, and you have to have so many subscribers. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> to be able to go live. So if you would subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom. It's Friday night.